Good evening, friends. Welcome to Sunday in the Word from right here at Salem Creek Church of Christ. Thank you for sharing your time with us, and I pray that these few moments will be a blessing to you. Speaking of blessing, if there's any way that we can help you, you need somebody to pray with, do you need someone to sit down and open the Word and help you come to a better understanding of the will of God, give us a call here. Our telephone number is area code 615 893-7532. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for morning worship. We have Sunday school at 1045. We have Sunday night worship at uh, 530. Come worship with us anytime you have a chance. We'd love to get to know you. On Wednesday nights, we meet at 645 for uh, 45 minutes of Bible study. We have classes for every age group as well as several adult classes. We'd love to have you come uh, study the Word with us. And by the way, this coming Wednesday night, we're going to do something we do every year on Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. We'll not be having classes, but we'll be having a special service of Thanksgiving where we focus on praising God in song, sharing thoughts from the Word, and focusing on the blessings that God gives to us. Come out and join us, if you will. Psalm 136 is where we're going to be tonight, or at least that's where we're going to begin we're going to take just a little bit of a break from going through the Word of God. We're about ready to go into the book of Joshua uh, with that little journey. But tonight, since this is Thanksgiving week, I want us to focus on that, Thanksgiving. Psalm 136 begins this way. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Now, if you read Psalm 136, you'll find that every one of the 26 verses ends with that statement, His loving kindness is everlasting. Your translation may use the word loving kindness. It may use the word mercy. It may use the term steadfast love, all of those are tra translations of the he Hebrew word hesed, which really includes all of those thoughts, loving kindness, mercy, steadfast love, God's loyalty toward his people. The word hesed is very often used in passages where the Bible talks about God keeping the covenant with his people. He keeps his covenant, he keeps his word, because he is a good God, he's a faithful God, and his loving kindness, his mercy, his steadfast love is without fail. Psalm 136, uh, man, it's a beautiful expression of worship. It could very easily be sung as a hymn. It may have been done this way. A worship leader might have uh, sung the first line of a verse, for example, give thanks to the Lord for his good. You can hear in your mind a worship leader singing those words, and when he finishes, the congregation answers by singing the words for his loving kindness is everlasting. And you can imagine it going on that way for 26 verses with each of the thoughts that are presented. A new thought is presented in the first line of each verse. It is followed with a repetition of that statement, his loving kindness is everlasting. And that's a beautiful way to do that. By the time you get to the end of this beautiful hymn, you understand what it's all about. It's all about the love of God, the goodness of God, His rich mercy toward His people. Interestingly and importantly for us in these thoughts today, it begins as an expression of thanksgiving, or shall we say a call to give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. Why should I give thanks to the Lord? I should give thanks to the Lord, verse 1 says, because He is good. And then you follow that up with that statement, his loving kindness is everlasting. We ought to give thanks to God because God is good, and He is good all of the time. There are occasions where something really positive happens in somebody's life. They'll tell you about that, and their concluding statement of their story will be, God is good. Well, yes, God is good. He's good when everything is going well in my life, but you know what? He is also good when I face the challenges of life. Admittedly, there are times when it is very easy to be a thankful person. If I am being successful in my career, if I'm happy in my marriage, my wife and I are getting along famously, we're showing nothing but love and concern for one another, my children are 
excelling. My grandchildren are making straight A's. My health is good. My pocketbook is fat. I have a refrigerator that's full of food that I love to eat. I look at all of that, and I hopefully I'm saying thank you, God, for your blessings. In those types of situations, it is very easy to give thanks. I would encourage all of us today to understand that we are truly blessed, not to take God's blessings for granted, but always in all situations to be thankful and to express thanks to God. At the same time, there are very often occasions in life where it is very difficult to say to someone, thank you. I mean, we look at the tough times and we just wonder, what have I got to be thankful for? How can I say thanks to anybody? Everything is negative in my life. I love to play golf, but there's a rule, a very major rule in golf. In fact, you're not playing golf if you're not following this rule. You play the ball where it lies. What does that mean? Well, if you can imagine standing on the first tee, you swing and you hit your drive and your drive ends up in the middle of a fairway on lush green grass. You've got a beautiful lie. Man, you're looking forward to hitting that second shot, and you just know in your mind it's going to land in the middle of the green. On the other hand, you might make that swing on the first tee, hit the ball, and you didn't make such a good swing, and your ball winds up laying behind a tree. The rules of golf say you play the ball where it lies. You play it from behind the tree. We're all tempted to go over there and pick up our ball and move it and set it out from behind the tree on some lush green grass. The rules of golf say play it where it lies. That's the way life is. Now, life is not a game. Life is deadly serious, and there are a lot of challenges in life. What life says to us is that we have to play the ball where it lies. There are crises that come up in our lives, and we just have to deal with them. We can't just immediately snap our fingers and make them go away. When we find our ball behind the tree, so to speak, we may think it's impossible to give thanks to God. If I've just heard the doctor tell me I have cancer, and it looks like I have six months to live, I may find it very difficult to say thank you, God. If my wife has just heard that news, and I've been in the room with her and the doctor and heard the doctor say to her, you don't have very long to live, I can assure you it's going to be very difficult for me to say thanks. If my marriage is on the rocks, if it's breaking up, if I'm going through a very painful and messy divorce, if my children have headed down the wrong path and they're not where they need to be in life if they're going in a bad direction. It's very hard for me to say, thank you, Lord. If I've just had to deal with some kind of financial disaster, it's very hard for me to be a thankful person to say thanks. If I find my ball laying behind the tree, it's very challenging for me to say thank you. There's a man of the New Testament who faced some very difficult circumstances in life. He wrote a letter from prison. In fact, he wrote several letters from prison. One of them is what we know as the book of Philippians. It's written to the church in Philippi. The man's name who wrote it, of course, was Paul. He was an apostle of Jesus Christ, a very faithful, dedicated, and thankful apostle of Jesus Christ. He says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, be careful for nothing, that's the King James translation, be anxious for nothing. We would simply say, don't worry. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then he moves on in a few verses to talk about his own circumstances. Remember, number one, he's in prison when he writes this letter. Number two, remember that when you were in prison in, Rome, in the Roman world, they didn't bring you three meals a day. Very often, prisoners had to provide for their own sustenance. Well, there were times when people contributed to his financial needs. There were times when he just didn't have much at all. He looked at that, and he says, beginning in verse 10, 
I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. And evidently, they had been contributing to his uh, financial needs. Uh, there was a time, however, when they weren't able to do that because of their own circumstances. He's thankful now that that has revived. But he goes on to say, if you'll notice in verse 11, not that I speak from want. I've learned in to be content in whatever circumstance I am. Did you hear that, friends? And, and when we find our ball behind the tree in life, we need to remember those words. He says, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am. In verse 12, he goes on to talk about some of those circumstances. He says, I know how to get along with humble means. I know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled, of going hungry, of having abundance, of suffering need. And he go, just goes throughout that verse talking about, well, sometimes I'm hungry. Sometimes I've got everything I have to need. Sometimes I... I don't have any money in my pocket. Sometimes I've got enough to provide for my needs. But in all those circumstances, he says, I've learned how to be content. I've learned how to be a thankful person. How do you do that, Paul? And it's at this point that he wrote some very famous words that a lot of times we'll lift out of context and maybe used in ways that he didn't necessarily intend, it's at that point that he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. It would be ridiculous for me to quote that verse, Philippians 4 and verse 13, and say, I can do all things through him who strengthens me, and say, therefore I can dunk a basketball, therefore I can leap over a tall building because I can do all things through Christ who, th who strengthens me. Understand, he says those words after he talks about his circumstances. And he says, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're challenging. I've learned to be content anywhere. I've learned to be content everywhere. No matter what I have or what I don't have, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How do we face the challenges in life? We face them by trusting in Christ. And one of the most powerful verses in this entire book is found in chapter 4 and verse 19, where he says, My God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As we close tonight, I want us to focus on those words. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ. Now, I can rejoice when I've hit my drive and my ball is laying on beautiful green grass in the middle of the fairway. But I can still rejoice, I can still be thankful when I find my ball in life lying behind the tree. In times where I have an abundance, I can be thankful. In times when I face the challenges of life, I can be thankful. Why? Because of Christ. Why? Because God will give me the things that I need. And being a thankful person isn't about what I do not have and what I want. Being a thankful person, friends, is about being grateful for what we do have. Bow with me and we'll close with prayer. Father, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for every blessing you give to us. Help us in the good times to say thank you, Lord. Help us in the challenging times when we find our ball behind the tree. And as we have to play the ball as it lays, to be grateful to be thankful to you in all things. Help us, Father, to thank you, understanding that you're a good God and your loving kindness is everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us, friends. I hope you have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Come back and join us again next week. Until then, may God richly bless you all.